What's up, everyone, and welcome to DI Radio, the talk show where I interview. Yeah, wow, t- totally tough. Even though I'm reading off them, where I interview influential <laughs> people within the Smash community, and this right here is one of the most influential people I've met, especially for me because him and I are related in terms of country. This is Sonics. Sonics, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. yeah. How about you? I'm doing great. Um, today I woke up. I woke up super late. Um, totally forgot I have a lot of things on my schedule today. That's probably why you guys. Are, I'm wearing the hat again because I'm having a terrible hair day. Everybody is following <laughs> everyone. I hope. I hope you're not going through a terrible hair day. Uh, <laughs> I'm wearing this this shirt because I have a Discord party to head out to afterwards. But I'm yeah. so, I'm so happy you can join us, dude. It's it's great to have you. On I'm happy to be here. Yeah, dude, and and I know you're having um, camera issues, so no big deal. Yeah. If you're an audio listener, this is gonna be great for you because you're like, oh, cool, I didn't get to see what Sonics looks like. But if you're a video listener, then yeah, you <laughs> really get to see like a photo of Sonics that'll probably edit in later, and then you just get yeah. to see what Vance is wearing and what his room looks like again for like the thirtieth time or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Sonics, I know who you are. We had a very good time at the Congo Saga. I got to meet you. I got to yep. meet Omar, and I got to meet. Sharpie for the first time. It was great having you guys around. Uh, seeing yeah. the Dominican Republic show up to California, but not only that, seeing them show up into another tournament that was, you know, that wasn't Genesis. Sorry, I lost my words there. It wasn't Genesis, but seeing mm-hmm. them show up to a saga was really, really great. So, like I said, I know who you are, but it, it surprises me. But for those who don't know who you are, Sonics, <laughs> give, give me the elevator pitch. All right. Um, I'm Sonics. I'm ranked number one in the Dominican Republic and number two uh, on the Wi-Fi Warrior rank- rankings. I uh, I love Sonic the Hedgehog. He's my favorite video game character. I get a lot of hate for playing Sonic, but um, it is what it is. I would hate Sonic too if I didn't play him. So I kind of get where you're all coming from. And uh, yeah, other than Smash, I love video games, music, and uh, sports. I swear. Yeah. Sorry, I had myself muted there for a second. So yeah, that's that's great. I mean, I know what it's like to deal. Well, I don't know actually what it's like to deal with Sonic Hate. <laughs> I just I just hear it online. I think that's something. Where, that's kind of why I brought you in today. You know, I kind of wanted you to tell your story. I think you were one of the players that I I think when we had that conversation that we had in the car about, I was like, dude, it's so crazy. You're the number one Dominican Republic player, but not only that, like I know that your name is being talked about a lot online. And yeah. within three months, people were starting to talk about you a little bit. And then quarantine happened. And then everybody started talking about you. And then now everybody yeah. doesn't stop talking about you. You're <laughs> you're like the next hot thing, bro. You're like Best Ness. You know, you're you're like the Best Ness yeah. Sonics means. You know, you're. it's crazy how yeah. hard to see you grow. And then just thank you. hearing people hate you. Not even hearing, reading, because I'm not hearing anybody at this point. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, hearing <laughs> that people hate you kind of spoke to me on a level that I was like, I always tell people, chase the bag. Chase the bag because right. money isn't going to make you happy, but it's going to bring you opportunities. Things that right. you couldn't do or couldn't have, right? And I'm sure you chased the bag a lot to come down here to SoCal for Congo Saga when you did. For sure. And I know you chase the bag a lot, so you, especially now when you know not a lot of people are working, we're all stuck at home. You know, if you can make a dollar anywhere, shoot, you might as well do that, right? And mm-hmm. I tell people chase the bag, but now that we're having this player chase the bag, everyone is hating him for it. And I'm like, dude, remember when? You know, I, I don't want to name him just for people's sake because I know I'm going to get a lot of like, oh wow, I can't believe you say his name like he's Voldemort or something. But yeah. remember when, just in general, remember when X player chased the bag and they became successful? A lot of people obviously hated him for it, but shoot, he did what he did, and you know he got to where he was because of it, and then now you got to where you were because of it. You know, you're now the number two best Wi-Fi warrior out there. You know, according to this ranking system, and yeah, you're you've become this this people this person that people fear. They're like now they're like that's not a free L. I'm sorry, that's not a free W, that's a free L now when I see that name on the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> so That's I've, crazy. I've talked enough. You know, I have, I've said my piece, Sonics. I'm, yeah. I brought you here today because I wanted you to share your story. I'm, I've always been, we didn't have a lot of time to talk to you, you know, when we met back in December. And I kind of want yeah. to hear more about you. I kind of wanted to talk to you about the beginning. Where, 
your humble beginnings. Where did you start? You know, who, like I said earlier in the pre-show, you know, who bought you the Game Boy? Who bought you the 64? Who bought you the GameCube? I kind of want to know, man. Like you, you t- tell me your story. Okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm done talking. You, you, the floor is yours, buddy. All right, all right. So it all started back when I was two years old. So I was living with my grandparents and um, my aunt. She had a Super Nintendo, and I would play Super Mario World every day, like all the time. I would always go um, and bother her while she was playing with her friends, and I would be like, yo, can I play? Can I play? She would let me play, and I would just love it. So when I turned, fast forward to when I turned four years old, my dad bought me my first Game Boy Advance. It was blue, I remember. <laughs> it had um, Sonic Advance 2, I'm pretty sure it was. It was either Sonic Advance 2 or Advance 1. But, um, so I just loved the game. I fell in love with the Sonic franchise. As I kept growing older, I, I, um, I kept playing Sonic games. I bought every single Sonic game there was, there was available. I had, um, from Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic DX, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, um, Sonic Heroes, that was... Which is actually my favorite Sonic game. That's crazy. I, yeah, <laughs> I like. I'm sorry. I I like Sonic Heroes. That was a really good game. I. You do? Yeah. Yeah, it's it, a really good game. It, it, I thought the concept was so fun. A little buggy from what I remember, but like it was just a really yeah. good concept. And also coincidentally, just like really quick, I grew up the same. I, not the same way you did, but my aunt when I visited her in El Salvador, my aunt was living there, and yeah, she had Super Mario. And I played the yeah. hell out of a Super Mario and a Super Nintendo because I never had a Super Nintendo. I didn't even know it existed. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. You were you were talking. Okay, okay. So um, yeah, Sonic Heroes and you know all those classic Sonic games that people talk down to nowadays. But <laughs> yeah, back in the day they were perceived as good. Um. So yeah, and uh, oh oh yeah yeah yeah. I would also play Smash sixty four. With my cousins, I would get thrashed on because they were like ten years older than me and stuff. <laughs> but hey, I tried. Hey, sometimes I would take stocks off of my off of his friends, and they'll be like, "Yo, your cousin's kind of good, bro, and he's so young, holy." And um, so then the week came out. I bought Sonic Unleashed, obviously Sonic and the Black Knight. That was my those were my first two Wii games, and then my third one was Brawl. So for Brawl, I was very, very excited because Sonic was getting added into the game. So I mained him straight away. He was very fun to play as. I never really got into a competitive Brawl because I was like eight years old, eight or nine years old. So I was very young. But as I kept growing older, I kept sawing these these tournaments. And I was like, yo, I would love to do that someday. I would love to play like that someday. And eventually, I, ju- I just kept playing the game. Nothing too serious. I just played with my friends. I would always beat them. Uh, they would, at some point, they would do like, yo, let's do a 3v1 versus Carlos. I'm Carlos, by the way. That's my real name. <laughs> they would be like, let's do a 3v1 versus him. Mm-hmm. And I would win with Olimar, who we all perceived as a bad character cool. at the time. Like, obviously, we all know Olimar was good in Brawl. Mm-hmm. But, you know, being so young and not knowing anything about the scene, we all thought he was trash. Like, pretty pretty bad <laughs> and i would beat him with olimar so when smash 4 came out i uh one of my best childhood friends contacted me reached out to me he was like yo it's been a while bro how you doing and i was like yo i'm chilling i'm fine how about you and he's like yo i'm um, nothing much i just i bought smash 4 the new smash game for the wii u would you like to come come to my house and play for a bit and i'm like yeah sure i'm down so I went there, we played, I got absolutely destroyed, like absolutely destroyed. And I was like, I was so confused because back when we played Brawl, I, w- I would beat him all the time. So I was like, yo, what am I doing wrong? Like, how are you winning? And it turns out I had a really bad rolling habit. Like I would roll across the stage <laughs> every time. Mm-hmm. And he told me like, dude, gotta stop rolling you got more rolls than a bakery and i'm like what does that even mean man so when i got home i was like nah 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 i'm gonna beat you next time i swear 
So I told him to send me all the videos, all the competitive videos, tournaments. At the time, it was Apex 2015, then uh, MLG, the MLG tournament. And I saw all these players, you know, uh, you know who, I, I don't really have to say their names, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was, I felt pretty inspired by them, by their play. And I was like, yo, I kind of want to play like that. And then I started looking into Sonic videos because he was my main. My friend told me like, yo, you should watch 6WX. It was like the best Sonic at the time. Mm, yeah. 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 Six. Shout out to Six, by the way. He's the he, homie. He was uh, like really quick for like, I know a lot of people hate Sonic and I, there were times I hate Sonic, but I think out of all the, I mean, I, think, I talked about you. I actually enjoy watching your Sonic play because I love seeing you. how you work it. You know yeah. how you work it down. It makes it makes me think like, oh, I understand why he went there. I understand why he's doing these things. This is a really, really mm -hmm. cool. But back in Smash Four, I actually liked watching Six WX because you know there are some. Uh, we have Meteor here in SoCal. Doesn't really play yeah. too much anymore. But just watching some of these players, some of these Sonic mains, I felt that some people just didn't give enough credit. They were very entertaining and they were very hype. They were very hype. Yeah, about their plays, what they can do you know their, their aggression their passiveness i just i was like wow i sonic can actually be played very very well guys you guys just you guys just hate this character way too much but but go on go on yeah <laughs> so yeah so i got into i would study literally every 6wx video out there like every single one of them to the point where i feel like i molded my sonic style out of his mm -hmm. and it was kind of funny <laughs> but yeah so Next time I, I went to his house, uh, no, I mean, by next time I went to his house, which was uh, two months apart, I bought a, a 3DS with Smash. I, I, at the time, I was like, uh, I'm not too sure whether if I'm whether I'm going to take Smash seriously or not, so I'm just going to get a 3DS because it's cheaper than a Wii U, and we'll see what happens. So I got a 3DS. I practiced every day. I got into Anther's Ladder. And I would play all these people and practice. And uh, when I went back to my friend's house, I beat him. And he was like, nah, he was getting salty and stuff. He was like, how do you improve so fast? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. I mean, you sent me the videos. I just followed them along. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. Five months later, I went to my first tournament. I was using, I, I went cloud, funny enough. Because I was watching Mewtwo King's Cloud at the time, and I was like, yo, it looks so cool. I might just have to go Cloud. And I was also very mad at Sonic, because I felt like I was stuck with him. Mm -hmm. And it didn't help that the people in Anthers Letter were like, yo, Sonic is overrated. Sonic sucks. Sonic loses this matchup and this other one. And I'm like, yo, maybe you're right. Maybe I should just main Cloud. So I went Cloud. I went, uh, I think it was 3 and 2. Yeah, I went three and two. And uh, I counterpicked with Sonic the last game, but I still lost. I was like, uh, it's fine. This was in um, 2016, by the way. Wow. August 2016. Okay. Four years ago, Jesus. Yeah, time flies, man. No, I, so I tell people, I think time flies is like, it sounds weird because I know some people are trying to like, I think really quick, I don't want to go back to you as soon as, ASAP, no, that's fine, like, fine. Uh, people in currently now as like they I I do have a life I have a job I, well, I had a job I used to be a bartender and going to university um, yeah. living in my own place you know having my own things but a lot of people like would I think a lot of people now they seem to like want to hate smash to the point that they try to remove themselves of their involvement and I totally understand that but when I think about my time and how much time has passed I look at it in yeah. smash years I was like 2016 dude I remember 2016 so well you know this character just came out and I remember every <laughs> year because every yeah. year something in smash happened that made me remember that year more or less so that's just yeah. categorizing I, I remember 2016 2017 yeah go on go on yeah 2016 I think that's when Bayo got released, right? Yeah, I, I think it might have been 2016, 2017, because it was like, you know, let me look it up. I'm, who am I kidding? I have, why am I asking these questions? I have access to what is called the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I remember Bayo coming out. I was super hyped up for the character. Yes, you're right. 2016, February 3rd was the day that she was yeah. actually released. I remember because I was super yeah. hyped because I actually love the Bayonetta games. 
They're very, very. Oh good. really? Yeah, yeah. If you like yeah. Devil May Cry, if you like Astral Chain, that's like the newest one. If you like normal yeah. heroes or any games like that, Band Meta is a very fun game. It's very, very cool. Yeah, yeah. They're very, they're pretty similar, aren't mm. they? Yeah, yeah. Also, shout outs to you really, really quick. Like, I remember. See, I was in the same boat as you. I was very scared of buying a Wii U. I was like, well, I don't know the prices. Why? If you tell me in a second here, but. I was like, dude, three hundred dollars yeah. for uh, what feels like a play kids console, you know, uh, yeah. a, a Fisher Price tablet, and and, and, a, and a nicer, nicer looking Wii doesn't seem like the amount of money I want to spend. You know, spoiler alert, I did end up yeah. buying the Wii U for like two hundred dollars off somebody who didn't want it. But I Same. do remember there was a really interesting, not adapter, but it was like a, a homebrew hack that someone made a video go viral. Where you could actually plug in the GameCube controller as an input for the 3DS, and I remember a lot of interesting people were doing it back in the day. So shout out to that. Really? Yeah, yeah. There was there was a homebrew hack. I like it was like something that you could not a homebrew, but like I'm using homebrew because it's just something that I use in my own terminology this way. But like there was a hack. Yeah. That, that I remember going on YouTube, somebody going through like the steps of like this is what this is what you can actually do to use the game controller on the 3ds and i was like wow that's so next level and next thing i know a lot of like top level smashes were all doing that because you know back then we didn't have you know the we the wii u version yet it, it, yeah. it was announced you know we all had the what, what i like to call the 40 dollar premium demo um, <laughs> we had the 40 dollar premium demo and then the wii u version was coming out within the end of the year so i remember a lot of people doing that and coincidentally, a lot of those people who did do that ended up being much better than, you know, some of the other people because they went through the process of hacking that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go on, go on. I, I want to I hear your story. I apologize. I just got okay, into remembering okay. that fine. timeline. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So, that was in August 2016. And then, and I think it was October, I went to my second tournament ever. And I placed 13th out of... I don't know. It was, I think it was sixty something, and I beat a PR player. He, uh, Naranja. He used Corin back then. Okay. Shout out to Naranja, by the way. Well, where was he? What, uh, what sure. was he PR? He was PR. I, I think I'm not too sure, but I think he was number six. Okay, well, that's pretty high at the that's time. Good. Yeah. Is is your is your guys's PR structure like? Because SoCal, we have we just shrunk down to fifteen. We used to be twenty. I don't know how. Yeah, many I remember. We, yeah, how many how many PR players do you guys usually play? Uh, ten. We only we only have ten. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then, um, after the tournament, because I lost to another player who had a, like a really huge breakout in that one, uh, the TO came up to me and said, "Yo, uh, you're really good. You're going places, bro. Like, don't give up. Keep keep going at it." And I'm like, those words really inspired me. Mm-hmm. And I um, so I kept playing. I kept practicing. I bought a Wii U. One week after that, for about two hundred dollars, <laughs> and then I just I kept practicing and practicing. Eventually, I beat the number one player in the PR. Uh, I timed him out. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but um, and then eventually I climbed out all the way to number one myself, and I became like that threat. So fast forward to twenty seventeen, I won. I think I pretty much won all the tournaments I entered mm-hmm. in the DR. And I, I had the, the opportunity to go to Shine, Shine 2017. Thanks to uh, an online qualifier they did, I got 25th, losing to Ooh, okay. MVD and Dark Wizzy. Had some pretty close games with Wizzy. They were pretty fun. And uh, yeah, like at the time, people started were starting to talk about me. They were like, yo, Sonic's pretty good i remember 6wx who was like my mentor at the time he was like yo if sonics if people like sonics knew how to win they would be a top three sonic and i'm like huh i was so confused because i was like what do you mean by know how to win and then he explained to me like i mean he was like if you played to win more often then you would be a top three sonic and i'm like hmm so those words really stuck with me up until now. <laughs> and uh yeah. I think I think that's what made me like break out. So then in, in twenty uh twenty 
2019, when I went to my first Ultimate Tournament, got 25th, it was Genesis 6. I lost yeah, yeah, I to Zach Ray. I yeah, I lost to Zach Ray, 3-1. All very close games. And Yeti. And yeah, I think Genesis 6 was kind of like a wake-up call to me. Because I remember seeing people, everybody, talking about Zach Ray. They were like, oh my god, who is this kid? He's like so good. And he was ranked number one in Japan, I'm pretty sure. And he he yeah, would... So. Yeah, he was number one in Japan, right? I can't remember off the top of my head. Like, trying to look up every PR for everywhere in the world. I wish there was a better way to do it. But I think, yeah, at the time, yeah. Zachary was considered at least, at least bare minimum, like, top five in Japan. I remember everybody, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. everybody was saying, like, he's the next MK Leo. Like, that's kind of, like, yeah. the legacy of being that young prodigy of, like, he's the next so-and-so. So, like, yeah, I remember people saying, like, Dude, Zachary, everybody wanted to see Zachary for Zim Kaleo Grand Finals. I remember very well this. Yeah. Yeah, Zachary is really, really good. So that, that kind of was like a wake up call for me because he would, not only was he number one in Japan, he would consistently destroy Ken, who was mm. considered the number one Sonic in the world. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'm not that bad. <laughs> and uh, I just kept practicing and practicing, playing. I the first season of Ultimate here in Dominican Republic was kind of both disheartening and motivational for me because I got second to Omar, who at the time was popping off with a snake, mm-hmm. and I was pretty lost at the matchup. So I kind of I kind of wanted to get wanted to get better at it. Eventually, I did. I reclaimed my number one spot in the PR, and uh, yeah, then Capitancito, who's number two right now. No, number three, sorry. He was on the come-up, too. He he would beat me. We would go back and forth. But at the end, I got the the upper hand. And, uh, yeah, I just kept... For me, Smash Ultimate has mostly been about matchup experience. Right. Cause like, for example, when I first had to fight Snake, I lost to him. Then Wolf. Wolf is pretty... He's pretty basic in this game, but there's certain things that are quite tricky to catch on to. Then, um, who else? There's like Lucina. I yeah, I think when you think yeah. about matchups, I think that's what Ultimate is in a nutshell. Uh, I've had a few yeah. conversations with some people who told me like Ultimate in theory is the hardest game to learn because you have 80, 80 matchups. This game is eighty matchups. Yeah. There is a niche thing about a niche character with niche player that you may lose to if you're not ready for it. And trying to remember yeah. 80 matchups is very difficult. I mean, when you think about it, it's right? Tough. Yeah, scientifically speaking, the human brain can only hold so much memory. So when you try to cram in 80 matchups about 80 things plus the rest of your life, you're you're not going to remember everything that well. Uh, I think that's why yeah. there's like the buzz. I remember like a, like a few years back, he had like a a comprehensive note list on how to handle each matchup on a laptop. Yeah. If you guys remember that <laughs> Smash 4 era of the buzz. Um, but that the was legendary like, the buzz notes. Yeah, I thought that was the best really smart because in the heat of the battle, you're not going to remember everything. You know, uh, when even right. I just talk a little bit about myself really quick. I took boxing and there was a lot of things, you know, I wish I stuck with it, obviously, but it's a very hard sport and I enjoy watching it a lot. Um, yeah, I wish it stuck with me a lot too because it was a very it was very fun. I I loved it a lot. It's a lot of training, a lot of exercise. It's very hard. But the one thing that I remember my coach taught me about boxing was that you will always forget something, and that is why a coach exists. That is why a coach is here to yep. help because there is always something that you're not looking at at the heat of battle. There's always something that you don't remember at the time, and that's, that's why, right. Yeah, and that's why my job exists. I mean, even in Smash, that's why we have coaches. You know, at, at the yep. time of this, yeah, at the time of this recording, I probably have brought on at least two to three coaches on to be part of the show. So shout out to them. I don't want to name them because my recording schedule is all super weird. I apologize, guys. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to go, you know, a little bit forward here and talk about the the scene in the Dominican Republic. It's something that I feel like a lot of people don't know of. You know, we mm-hmm. talked about how your PR is just ten players. I kind of want to know a little bit about your scene, which I hope you can help me out here with. What is the scene like? Okay. How are your locals like? And describe to me a little bit about it. All right. So my locals, 
they're held in a in a pretty well actually we don't have any right now obviously because of covid yeah but pre covid they were held in a in a kind of in a space that the TOs would rent four times a month and would only have that we would only have one logo by the way eventually the people started making their own locals like for example once every other weeks one day after the the official ones let's call it that and uh they would get up until around 80 people max wow. on average yeah 80 people on average we would have a regional once every three months okay and uh yeah that's that's like basically it but basically it but i feel like my, my scene right here we have some pretty good players despite it being only yeah i know it's only a 10 player pr but we definitely have like a 20 i would say nah not 20 maybe 15 players that are like very high caliber mm -hmm. but it, it is just tough for us to travel yeah because of the flight expenses some people don't even have a visa mm -hmm. so it, it, it is tough for us but um but i feel like our players are really good our singing is really good the people are very nice the tos they're lovely people and yeah i love my scene honestly yeah i, I mean we, we had that conversation right in the car you know i really wanted to pick your brain on the dominican republic scene because you know when i think when I think about the scene in terms of it as a whole, and I apologize if I offend anybody, I'm just trying to give the best compliment the way that it reached out to me. When I think about the scene as a whole, when Mena RD, for those of you who, for you Street Fighter aficionados out there, when Mena RD won the Capcom Cup, I believe it was 2017, that is yeah. when Mena said, there are more players like me who are probably as good or better than me in the Dominican Republic, but it is so hard to get out here. And my yeah. favorite thing about Mena also, you know, watching him play was he was like a villain. He was not a people. He he was he captured that essence of being the proper <laughs> villain that when I watched him win or lose or get up on the stage, he sold to me a play style and a character that I never thought I would like. And then that's yeah. that's when I, and then you know people were saying like. Oh, dude, Mena doesn't just play Street Fighter. He plays Smash. And I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. And then the next thing I know, you know, um, I think that's at the time. And, you know, shout outs to Virim because his commentary is also one that I enjoy listening to. Sharpie was starting to come mm -hmm. out more often, you know, being as one of the best Charizard. Yeah. A character that everybody yeah. wrote off in Smash 4 got buffed. And then Sharpie was out here, like, taking names. So, mm -hmm. so little by little, you know, I started telling people, like, dude, this, this region called the Dominican Republic has some players that we have probably have never seen and i guarantee you if they come out they are going to make waves spoiler alert yeah they did even online <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah like, but shout out to you guys it, it's all you guys i got to meet omar i remember uh he was winning a lot of the earlier 2gg wi-fi tournaments that we did way before msm online he was yep. he was winning those you know people were like oh god snake online is already hard but now you're the only we have to fight like this really great Dominican Republican player from who's a snake main who's not even number one apparently he's just really great with snake and <laughs> I don't know what their number one is like but, yeah you know and that, you know I kind of want to go back to the subject here of talking about tournaments right and I think that's one thing I have to appreciate about other regions and other countries is they mm -hmm. may not have you know people who come to MSM you know we're like a basically original every Monday <laughs> MSM yeah. has like 150 plus entrance every Monday. Oh, and we used to do MSM. <laughs> yeah. It, and it feels like a regional, you know. Sometimes you have people from San Diego. Sometimes you have Spargo from, from you know, Tijuana. You have other players coming from other, you know, parts of the country. And it feels mm -hmm. like a regional. But when you guys get down to other countries, you know, even your locals feel like a regional because, you know, it's holding a local can be really difficult from what it sounds like. You know, just, you know, you rent right. out four times a week. Just the same way MSM does. So when mm -hmm. I want to come back to the central topic here is now that you guys have your locals and you guys have your regionals, right? How yeah. do you feel 
being the player that you are being limited, but also what do you feel like you wish your country could do? And I know we're feeling, I know it sounds like we're reaching the end of the podcast. Trust me, we're, we've got a little bit more to talk about, but I'm curious to see how you feel about <laughs> yeah. what, what what's a lot that you like about your locals and what's a lot that you like about the locals in the U S you know, what do you feel the Dominican okay. Republic could do better? I'm, that's what I'm curious to hear right now. Um, okay. So what I really like about the locals is the fact that they rarely get delayed. Like mm -hmm. the TOs are constantly reminding people like, yo, you got to play, hurry up, hurry up, mm -hmm. go to setup number two, this and that. And they're, they're like constantly checking out for, for the tournament to run in time. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing is that, um, uh, we don't really, we, we've never really had like any salty moments uh, so far, at least not at, at the locals. We've definitely had some uh, like regionals, but they were they were funny and they weren't like insulting or anything. Yeah. <laughs> they were just funny. But um, yeah, that's one thing. Uh, what I like about the US ones is the venue, man. I'm gonna say it's the venue because um, as much as, as much, uh, sorry, how do I say this? As comfortable as the venues we have we have here for our locals are, it's not nearly the same as the ones you guys have over there. Because mm -hmm. like over there, it's in a it's almost every time, it's in a hotel room. I mean not a hotel room, but like in a convention center or something. Yeah. And over here, it's just you know, pretty. I, w I don't want to say low quality, mm -hmm. but it's definitely not as high quality as over there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it, so that's one thing I feel like. Yeah. yeah it's understandable. I, I totally get. It. I think me traveling, I've traveled to the. I'm not gonna say I travel the world, but I've been to you know different countries yeah. and I've seen how the struggles, the the differences. Uh, sorry, differences. The differences between <sighs> you know a mall in say Cancun versus a mall in the United States, um, a mall yeah, yeah, in Utah yeah. versus a mall in, you know, say Panama. So I've always seen the right. differences and stuff like that. I, I totally understand what you're talking about. Yeah. But, um, for the regionals though, we have, a uh, a pretty, we, we get some pretty cool venues mm -hmm. because my, my team, my sponsor bandits and blink esports, they uh they they make sure like that's that's their goal right now their goal is to push the dominican scene to higher boundaries and so for our regionals and and stuff they they rent the best possible venues mm -hmm. and they look the same they like <laughs> just like the ones you guys have over there mm -hmm. like legit for the last major i feel like i was at a us tournament that's great and it felt I'm pretty nice i'm glad to hear that yeah, the sound quality, the the top eight entrances, mm -hmm. the stage, the main stage, everything. It, it was pretty, pretty nice. I think so, like, yeah, that's, yeah? No, yeah, yeah, go on, go on, go on. I want to hear more. Okay. Yeah, I want to guess, uh, uh, I want to say, like, that's their goal right now. They want to push the scene to higher boundaries. They want to make a name for themselves. And they kind of want to let the world know, like, yo, we have a scene. We have great players are down here. Like, just give us a chance. And that's why they're putting in work, blood, and tears for it to happen. Mm -hmm. That's why they're spending lots of money on venues, now sponsoring players, among other things. So expect great things from us in the future. Yeah, and, and I'm glad to hear that, honestly. I think when I think about SoCal, we, and I've talked about this on the show before, we had a really yeah. interesting time trying to catch up to the rest of the world. And then what I mean by that is the rest of the Smash teams. I think everybody was, you know, I'm not throwing shade. You know, I don't want to actually prefer not to say any names because I don't want people to think I'm throwing shade. I'm just more so complimenting them. If you guys already watched the yeah. pilot episode, you guys will definitely know what I'm talking about. Definitely go watch the first episode, by the way. I don't want to say the name because I want everybody to know, keep everything a mystery here. But uh, actually, I will say Vicky Kitty was the pilot episode. So if you guys are watching, you guys will know, you know, Vicky K talked about the scene in Florida. That was the difference between the West Coast and the East Coast, right? Everybody knew every local on the East Coast. West Coast, we were playing catch up. You know, you we were slowly trying to get to that same level that the East Coast had, you know, like 
like you have your co- your tournaments on the East Coast, you know, in Florida, in you know Maryland, Virginia, in New York. We were just playing catch up, and then eventually, you know, we, yeah. you know, shout outs to Fire and Dice. They were one of the first to like start, like, hey, you know, this is what we can do. This is how we can do it. Start, you know, building up the community a little bit more, flying out more players, sponsoring players. You know, they sponsored Nico, they sponsored Larry, and then mm-hmm. TGG came in. They teamed up. You know, if you're pretty easy to speak out. They, you know, they had the ESA years. And with that, they were able to show the world that West Coast is the best coast to be in when it comes to some of these majors. You know, it's one of the places to be at. And then you telling me, you know, the Dominican Republic is now pushing that in the same way that 2GG was pushing to have, you know, the the West Coast, you know, SoCal as a spot. It's great to hear that, you know, other regions such as yours really want that same, like, hey, you know, we have hitters, we have quality, we have tournaments, give us a chance and you'll see that our place yeah. is just like any other. You know, it's 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 even better or it's just as good. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, like I feel like that's the main thing about underdog regions that they don't they don't necessarily have the resources to kinda put themselves out there mm-hmm. and show the world that in, in a main stage that they are really good. But once they do, they're like they, it's a huge shock for everyone. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, kind of talked about a little bit about your beginning, right? I like to, and I'm glad yeah. you even talked about that. It's shout outs to them. You know, they're. I'm really happy to hear that they're doing a lot of this stuff. It's. It makes me happy. Yeah. It makes me happy that they, you know, they, you. They, they, they're out, they're out there just pushing you guys. It's great to hear, and I love it. You love to see it, man. Yeah. But coming out to you, a little bit more about you, right? We're going back to that a little bit and talk about you know learning from okay. six WX learning. Learning from, you know, even the, master, oh. the person you looked up to, even giving you a little bit of oh, a inspiration and more comments. Yep. Now that you've come as a whole, number, number, like you said, number two in the worldwide Wi-Fi ranking, number one in the Dominican Republic, you know, yeah. even though you didn't get top eight, but still 25th at Genesis 6. Um, yeah. What's it like to, to go from people know me, they may or may not know me, it's not up to them. To now everybody mm-hmm. knows me. And then now everybody oh, rolls man. their eyes. Everybody hates me. Everybody doesn't like <laughs> me. I mean, not everybody, because I like you. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> for for yeah, the yeah. listeners out there, you know, what is it like to to still push forward your your meta? Sorry, my camera went out of focus here. Your meta with Sonic, still push forward your gameplay, still and, and still come out on top and still just shrug that off. What what is it like to just go through that every day? What's what's your process? Um, honestly, it's kind of, it all comes down to me knowing who I am, Mm -hmm. what I want, and not letting what other people think about me affect me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to lie, sometimes the hate does get kind of overwhelming. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm just like, I mean, they're behind a screen they can't even see you nor hear you. They don't know your story. They don't know what you're trying to do. They like, you know, they, they just see this, uh, the, the higher, they, they just see the tip of the iceberg. They don't see what's under that. Ah. So yeah. And six, six WX has helped me out a lot in this because he himself, even though he was pretty aggressive, he would get hate. Hmm. He would be, people would hate him. It would be like, Oh my God, Sonic. So annoying, 6 x is so campy, 6 x this, that. And he would just, he would tell me like, yo, listen to the people that matter, bro. The people that matter will always support you and they will not try to bring you down. Like, don't listen to them. And so I, I just try doing that. Sometimes I do kind of uh, fall back into the habit or of caring about what other people say. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm, I've been doing a pretty great job at kind of flooding out all the hate. Yeah, I I can definitely agree. I feel like you don't you don't let the hate take control of you. You let your gameplay speak for itself. You know. Yeah. I think that's the funniest thing we talked about too. Well, and that's so quote unquote funny, but like interesting thing that we talked about is when you know we were driving up to the airport. You know, I I told you, you I felt Sonic is still a topper high tier, and then you said, oh, most definitely. You said that's yeah. You know, <laughs> Sonic is still high top tier you know people just don't know how to play him or people just right and you said the scary the scariest thing you told me is that 
The reason why Sonic is still good is because he still has the toolkit. It's a little bit less, but you said the scariest thing about Sonic is nobody is willing to put in the time to learn the matchup. Right. That is a scary. That's thing. true. Nobody wakes up. It in is. The morning. It is. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, "Dude, you know what I want to do today? I want to learn the Sonic matchup." No one does. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, Sonic is already good mm-hmm. as he is, but he becomes even better. When people do not know the matchup. Yeah. So that's kind of like the thing. So if you don't put in the work to learn to know the Sonic matchup, to learn how to play against him, you, you're you not going to do well. And you're just going to hop on Twitter and complain about it. it it's that simple. Yeah. And I kind of want to take a little step back with one of my questions I said, right? Um, yeah. Looking at it, what does it feel like to go from, you know, obviously you get a lot of hate, but I kind of want to talk about more about the praise a little bit here. What does it yeah. feel like to get? What does it feel like to get, gain the praise? Gain the praise from the players. Now everybody talks about you, right? You used to be. I mean, I, you're obviously for for all you audio listeners out there, you're getting much of a better show on audio than you are <laughs> on video. But <laughs> for unless you want to see Vance ASMR, but going <laughs> back, right? You, I yeah. mean, Everybody can hear, right? You're a pretty humble dude. You're just a guy who lives in the DR, trying to you know trying to make an obvious living and here in quarantine. You know, doing the best yeah. you can, looking up to, you know, your inspirations and them telling you, you know, getting back to you and be like, hey, you need to play like this. Right. But now, what does it feel like to start to gain that traction? Right. You know, I, I spoke to Fabs a little bit, right? If you guys watch that episode, you know, what is it like to yeah. gain that traction of like, oh, my God, everybody's now knowing who I am. Everybody's interested in me all of a sudden. How does it feel to yeah. know you're finally getting those kudos? Uh, it feels pretty good. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. But... I was, I'm not going to say I was used to it, but at the same time, I don't, it doesn't really, how can I say this? It doesn't really um, change anything for me. Like, if at all, it just helps me be more confident in myself that all these top players, all these people that I looked up to, they start to acknowledge me because, uh, and I'm saying this, because when I first started playing on Wii U, I met 6 uh, I mean, not in person, but over Wi-Fi. Right. Because I would, because he, here's, I want to, is it okay if I kind of add a little bit of story, hey, story to this? Yeah, no, go for it, bro. This, this is your show. Okay. The floor is yours, man. Tell it. Tell it like it is. <laughs> all right, all right. So, okay, funny, funny story. So back when I was, when I first got my Wii U, I would always, always do uh, stream hopping, I believe it is called. I would be like, I would check for every time that a top player would be streaming and I would hop into their stream and try to get a, a viewer battle with them. So I would do this with all Sonic mains like Supergirl Kells, 6WX, even top players like Mr. R, uh, Larry Lur. So when I first played 6, he was like, hmm, I like this Sonic. This Sonic kind of copies me and stuff and it, it, it was funny so we just i don't know i would always support his streams and stuff we would talk a bit he would help me on on matchups and on playstyle issues and then yeah like it, it felt pretty good so uh we went from being it, it, our relationship went from being a fan and his favorite streamer i would say to a friend friend to friend you know and it was pretty. It was pretty nice. Same thing happened with Kales. I'm pretty sure I can call Mr. R my friend right now. Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're, I'm cool with him. And uh, yeah, like overall, it just feels very, very good. I gotta say. Not only because those are people that most of the community look up to, but because um, thanks to that, they can also influence the others to kind of have an to to um change the perspective on you like the other day mk leo tweeted uh, mk leo is a homie by the way shout out to him mk leo tweeted uh something something sonic i as much as i hate sonic i gotta admit sonic is really good dude has a good mind and i'm like i i feel very happy about it mm-hmm. and everybody sent that message to me even my friends that don't even play smash they're like bro what the hell what is this and I'm like, dude, I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know either. And then, 
And then he he DM'd me. He was like, "Yo, your Sonic is great, man. I can't wait to see you play offline. Uh, we gotta play offline too." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." So yeah, it makes me very happy that my work is is finally being recognized because I feel like I've always I don't want to say I've always been this good because that's definitely not the case, but I do feel like before quarantine, uh, for the most part, my mentality was what what was holding me back. Mm-hmm. Like for example, I, I would I would hate absolutely hate camping. Like it, it's crazy, <laughs> I know, but I would I would absolutely hate it. Like I remember playing Meister at a uh, Congo Saga, and I did not camp because of the stream. I was like, nah, I don't want to camp because people are gonna call me campy, and uh, I'm pretty sure I can do this without camping. Mm-hmm. And spoiler alert, that went pretty freaking bad. Mm-hmm. Like I got. I don't want to say I got destroyed, but game one was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. And I even, okay, I was so, so overconfident in myself that I let Meister, I let Meister take me to Battlefield, which is his best stage. Yeah. And I got destroyed, but I got two stocked. <laughs> then game game two, I went to FD. I was going to get three stocked, but then I was like, okay, okay, nah, I'm going to camp. I started camping while, while I was down. I mean, not necessarily camping because I was down two stocks, but I was being more careful. And I almost brought it back. Like I brought it back to last talk, last hit. And then in losers, I, I it was the same thing. I was like, nah, I don't need a camp. I'm gonna just play as I usually do. Until I played Leia, the Japanese Greninja, and I uh, I was winning to one. I was about to win game four. I had a huge lead, and I was like, nah, I'm gonna just end this right here. So I I try to finish it as quick as possible, and I got Greninja. So I, he got like down till something, something, down till this and that, down till dash attack, and I died. Then game five, I did and I lost. So after, specifically after Congo Saga, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, this, this can't be. I gotta, I gotta work on this. So I focused on, uh, on what you said, like just ignoring the people's hate, just trying to win, chasing that bag over anything. And yeah, here I am. I, th- I think like, that's what's been the most important part about my uh, about my play coming from Congo Saga to now. I think you you said it really really well. I think um, even Six Day BX you know gave you some really good advice, and I just tell people that yeah. I think being into fighting games and watching them and being a part of them, helping out, commentating. I tell people that sometimes the best, the scariest thing is an opponent who knows. They do not need to approach. That is the scariest thing. Right. I think you look at Justin Wong. He made a career out of playing lame. I remember one of the biggest advice yeah. I asked Mewtwo King when I met him for the first time ever when he came here to SoCal way back in Smash 4 was he told me, play lame, win the game. And I was like... Really? Yeah. Play lame, win the game. And I was just like... Wow. That's... Granted, sometimes they do go aggressive and I'm, not, I'm obviously not a PR player or anything. Yeah. When I started to slowly do that against some of my friends and they would make that over approach, that over commitment. And mm-hmm. then I just parsed it. I was like, dude, Mewtwo King was so right. If I'm <laughs> winning, they need to come to me. I have absolutely no reason to approach. Of course. Yeah. You're, my opponent is more scared of me than I am scared of him. I'm like, a, <laughs> you know, so exactly. I, and then that hit me so well. I mean, going back to that analogy of Justin Wong, he became one of the greatest FGC players of all time because yep. he knew when he needed to play lane. He made a career out of it, and people just didn't understand. So all of a sudden, you know, we look at H-Box. You know, he knew yeah. how to oppress an opponent in a, in a way that they would just break because everybody has a breaking point, and H-Box knew how to counter that. And, you know, I, I'm going to talk a little bit yep. about that because I – well, actually, I don't want to talk too much about it because I hope to get him on the show at some point. But yeah. You know, that's something that I'm glad, you know, a lot of people, you know, whether they hate it or love it, dude, sometimes I try to tell players, it's not the stream who pays you, bro. It's yourself. You owe it to yourself right. to play your best. It's Don't care about the stream. Don't care about the chat. The chat isn't going to give you $5, man. It's you yeah. winning this tournament. You know, it's you winning that money. Exactly. Match. That's what matters. Don't let the hype get to exactly. you. Exactly. Because the minute you do... All you see is the W, but you're not playing the game. Right. Yeah. That's right. 
And you know, it's funny how you mentioned Hbox because he's like the pioneer of that playstyle. Oh yeah. He's the embodiment of playing lame mm-hmm. as far as Smash goes. And I love and him he, for and it. He, yeah, exactly. They love him for it, you know? So it, that's kind of great to see. Yeah, and I think he's... I'm so sorry, just to cut you off really quick. That's the one thing I've enjoyed about right. watching him. It's just people go, oh, this match is going to time, dude. But I am so... I'm on the edge of my seat every second of right. watching Hbox on Melee, watching Hbox yeah. on, on Ultimate. Yeah, it's going to time. Who cares, bro? I'm loving this match. <laughs> you know Exactly. I have my popcorn ready. I'm enjoying every minute of this. <laughs> it is fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to lie. Because, like, here's the thing. Uh, and, and here's what most people don't get. Whenever people are playing lame, most of the time, they're trying to pick up on their opponent's habits. Mm-hmm. So, like, while I'm charging spin dash and stuff, or moving around your burst range, I'm fi- I'm trying to see what how you react to that. So next time, and whenever I do decide to go in, I absolutely explode you, like make you explode, mm-hmm. and take the stock off of one in interaction. I want to be the first one to say oh. it, and I hope this starts a trend. I don't think it's called playing lame. I think it's called playing optimal. And it, yeah. I might mean, get some flame for it. Maybe someone's gonna clip this and say like, "Oh, you're a big dummy." But I do think it's playing off <laughs> sometimes because you, yeah. you made the best example out of it. I'm not charging spin dash to wait you out. I'm waiting. I'm looking at your habit. I'm looking at how you're going to react, right. what you're going to do, how, how you're facing it. Once I've downloaded that, while I'm waiting on spin dash because you're scared of spin dash because of how good spin dash is, then I can go yep. in and I can pick apart your plan. I mean, when you look at books, Sun Tzu's The Art of War, all war is based on deception. You're deceiving your opponent. Yep. You're waiting for him, but you're not. You're looking at him because you're looking at his habits. You know exactly. And I think we've obviously at the time of this recording, right? We've probably had a few coaches. You guys can definitely go. Hopefully, you know, throw them a, a sub or a follow or reach out to them. They can help you learn more about these. You know, I'm. I think I've had. Yeah. This, by the time of this recording, Coach Ramses is uh, and I think I might have had Korean on at this time, or I'm probably going to have him on an episode. They, I would have recorded those episodes. So. Definitely oh, nice. for some ideas, but Sonic's out here mm-hmm. definitely giving you free coaching advice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, know, get, please give like, a huge shout out to him. You, I mean, you guys can hear he's a super wholesome, super cool guy, super chill. You know, appreciate it. So Sonic's, uh, I think I think we've kind of like you know wrapped up pretty pretty well. I think we've kind of you know hit, hit all the points yeah. that I wanted to talk to you about. You know. It's, it's been a great time yeah. talking to you, hearing your story. A great time. Um, my, I think my final question to you, and we, we've talked about Smash as a whole, uh, but I kind of want to mm-hmm. ask you two more questions before you know we wrap up the show and go into post show. Sure. My questions to you, and now people know your name is Carlos, but um, you know, the, the, the time I met you, you were pretty fashionable. I think it was really cool to watch. I think you inspired me to buy my pair of Nikes because I haven't worn Nikes in years. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was. I saw you buy like, <laughs> like two boxes and I was like, dude, I haven't worn Nikes in years. I should probably go buy a pair and I ended up spoiler. Yeah. Um, but I kind of nice. want to talk to you aside from that. What, what, are your, what are some of your hobbies? You know, what are some things you do to de-stress yourself from Smash or just mm. do something different for the day and you know, things you're interested in, just so that people can know. Okay. Alright, so my hobbies. Um, I love music like everything i do everything related to music i i sing i play instruments i make music uh i'm learning on how to make my own beats and instrumentals okay and uh apart from that i love watching uh watching naruto (laughs) that's okay i have there's no shame in admitting admitting you watch anime bro even yeah, Even yeah. Snoop Dogg watches Naruto, okay? Yeah, hey, Nar- Naruto's fire, bro. <laughs> Naruto's fire. And uh, what else? I-, I love playing sports. Mm-hmm. I forgot to mention, but it's just, you know, I haven't played a single sport ever since quarantine started, so it's been tough for me. I have been trying to stay in shape by working out at home, but it's just not the same. Yeah, I, I know that. I totally agree. Yeah, and uh, on top of all that, I'm a college student. So I also, you know, spend some time working on my homework, uh, taking some classes what, what here are, and what there. Are you, what are you studying? I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, um, what, what I'm studying? majoring in marketing. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we talked about that. We have the same. 
major. Yeah, thing. yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I do. All I've been doing during this quarantine. It's good to hear, dude. I, I mean, like a lot of some of the best, I just tell people. I know we're in a different state of mind. I just tell people. I go to I what made me choose to go to college was I thought of it as an insurance plan. I go, what if this yeah. doesn't take off for me? Then I have this little piece of paper that says I I paid attention and that allows me to make you know solid money, a sustainable living wage. Right. You know, gives me a very right. chance. So I just tell people that's my that was my idea going into college. It was an insurance plan for what if this doesn't take off for me or something like that. But Exactly. Um, good to hear that you play sports, you know, I wanted to, you know, ask you a general question of, you know, what are your other hobbies? Obviously people now know your name is Carlos. People know you like yeah. music. Uh, but to wrap mm-hmm. up, final question for you and yeah. give me, give me your honest thoughts and your opinions. Yeah. Going into COVID, now being in COVID and now being in the situation that we are and a lot of events have happened, you know. Right. What is your thoughts on the current state of Smash? As it is, as a whole, what, what do you what do you think of it? You know. Okay, so. Wi-Fi and all far, and everything. Yeah, as far as the meta goes, I feel like it's in a pretty, I wouldn't say good spot, but it's a, it's in a quite interesting spot because it's not as dominating as it is on offline. For example, I can win five tournaments back to back, but then Bestness wins the next five. Or Epic Gabriel, you see, so like that's kind of interesting to see. But at the same time, it's it feels weird because there comes to a point where we start questioning our own results and decisions because it's like, yo, I feel like I've improved, but I don't know if it's if this is just Wi-Fi or if I'm legitimately getting better at the game. Like it's confusing, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's honestly kind of weird. And I'm glad I guess we'll that. have to wait and see until offline comes back. Yeah. I'm but glad, as far as the community, it. yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. Just, just, just really quick, I wanted to add to that. Like, I'm glad you're saying it because it's a thought process that a lot of us have. Like, am I really good or is it just yeah. Wi-Fi? You know. But, but go on, go. Yeah. On. <laughs> and um, as far as the community goes, I feel like it's in a pretty good spot right now. People are starting to speak up, uh, gain courage, and be loud on the on the opinions they have and issues they encounter within the community. And that, I think that's pretty good because that helps us out any um any anything that could potentially harm the community in the future. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love the, this community, man. Like. People are so nice. People are so cool, chill, and I love this community. I can't wait until offline events come back so I can just hang out with all of my friends. Yeah, and now me too. I, I miss this every day. I probably might have said this in every episode, but I do miss that. That excitement Yeah. Of Monday is, it's a Monday, but it doesn't have to be a Monday because it's MSM. You know, it's... yeah. It's it's a weekend, but it doesn't have to be a week. It's it's different than every other weekend. Why? Because I'm doing this. You know, I'm traveling here. Right. I'm going to Oakland. I'm going to Vegas, or I was going to go to Korea and Japan for some cool content ideas that I wanted to flush out. But mm-hmm. hey, I agree with you. I think I think we have a show, Sonics. I don't know if there's anything you want to tell the people out there, but um, well, we can get we can get into that in the post show. Um, <laughs> but Sonics. You know, uh, where can keep where tell tell the good people out here where can they keep up with you? Uh, you guys can keep up with me in my Twitter. It's at Ultimate Sonics, and I recently started streaming. It's Twitch TV slash Sonics SC. Okay. I will be streaming from Smash tournaments, uh, Sonic games, speed runs. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you're doing that because it's funny that Master Mario is also like a huge fan of Sonic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's like, I, saw that. I don't want to play Smash. I just want to go ahead and speedrun Sonic games, and he's having such a blast doing it. So I'm glad you're doing it too. It's very fun. It's very fun, man. I'm telling you, you should try it out sometime. I remember in Sonic Heroes, I there was a like this was like 
the earliest days of YouTube, I want to know. It wasn't even YouTube. I think it was like MySpace. That's how old I am. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> in MySpace, there was a viral video that I watched of a glitch in the forest level that you could do with Espio to cheese the entire level so you could just skip a lot of the enemies and you don't have to find anything. And I remember doing it, and that's a, that's a game-breaking glitch. You're breaking, you know, having to go to the level. So I remember doing that glitch and yeah. feeling so satisfying. I will definitely admit to anybody, learn to speedrun Sonic or just learn Sonic glitches. They're very fun to do. They're very, very fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, aside from that, I would just... Yeah, I feel like just smash. Sometimes I might just hop in and chill, talk to my stream. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Sonic games. I think that's pretty much it. And if you guys want to have any questions, anything you guys want to ask me, just feel free to add me on Twitter. I'm always online over there. Like I'm on my phone 24-7. Mm -hmm. Or just DM me on Discord, and I'll try to reach out, reach out to you guys. Yeah. Well, Sonics, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. It's been a great Thank you so much for having me, man. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm happy to have you. We, maybe we can have... I do want to have more uh, Dominican Red players on for the next coming seasons of this podcast. If you guys don't know, this is the first... Oh, really? Yeah, this is season one. Season one is kind of like the pilot season instead of a pilot episode, kind of unofficially, officially. I don't know. I did I did do a pilot episode, but it's kind of more of a pilot season for me personally. Just because yeah. um, I've done other podcasts before, and to my dismay, there were some things that I felt like I failed, and or... Yeah, I feel like I failed and I decided, you know, I think right now is the perfect time to do a podcast. And I have this idea and I want to go about it this way. And the next thing I know, my, I hope my, I'm hope this podcast is successful. And if it is, you know, we'll be talking more in season two and more, more going in the future. But I decided like, I should give myself yeah. 10 episodes because I never got to reach those ten, first 10 episodes of my last mm -hmm. two podcasts. So if okay. you guys definitely want to see more, definitely reach out to me at Vance and Square and tell me what you love about the podcast. Tell me you like it. Tell me you want to see more. Let 2GG know you want to see more. Let the world know you want to see more. I don't know. Just tell me, man. Doesn't want to tell me. Let tell me. Know. Yeah, like like and subscribe. I don't know what else to tell you guys. But guys, <laughs> until then, until the next guest comes arrives, it has been my pleasure to serve you. We'll talk about more in the post show. Uh, definitely check my Twitter at Vance. Like I said, at Vance underscore XE, where I post the post show. Until next time, guys, like I said, it has been my pleasure to serve you and stay safe and be kind to one another.